Um, I was born in um, Pensacola, Florida, um, 1972. I was 22nd, 1972. And tell me about your home life. Well, I was raised by um, by my mom, um, single mom. Um, I had two sisters. Um, my uh, my um, one of my sisters. Um, I, I always say that she actually taught me how to fight. You know, uh, <laughs> for a senior. <laughs> And um, and Mark, they they gave showed me the game boxing game, but my sister uh, Trina showed me how to fight. I mean, I had to learn how to fight. Um, she was pretty much um, a bully. She bullied me a little bit until I got a little bit, got a little bit bigger, man. I was able to, you know, deal with her. Um, so you know, growing up a little, being a small kid, man, uh, you know, my my sister took advantage of that. Hmm. And what kind of neighborhood you live in? I, I grew up in the projects, man. Um, we, we it's called Pensacola Village, uh, known as PCV. Um, but I grew up out there, man, and it, it was a it was a um, um, a tough place to live, man. Everybody, you know, got along. You know, there were crime. You know, there was drugs. You know, but um, you know, it was a it was a tough tough situation, man. You know, and, and especially. Not having my dad, you know, my mom was a nurse. She worked three to eleven, um, you know, taking care of me and my two sisters. Man, it, it was it was tough, man. You know, and 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 that actually, you know, for a while, man, it, it you know, I wanted to stay in the house because I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to fight. And uh, you know, one of my neighbors, um, Kay Watkins, man, who I who I we call Nod, he played football, man, he's a football star. He ended up going to college at. Um, Florida um, daters, but he actually, you know, showed me what to do when some of the kids, other kids were bullying me, you know, want to, you know, um, try to take advantage of them, because remember, I, I was at 11, I was, uh, you know, I was 60, 60 pounds, mm. so I was a small kid, but it was a rough, rough place to, to grow up, man. Well, who could catch you, though? <laughs> you had you had um, I was, I was, yeah, I was fast. I was fast, but you know, still, man, you know, being sixty-five pounds, man, you know, at, at eleven, you know, that's small. I'm, I was a small kid, man. Yeah, hey, man, I understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, not that I'm small, but my mother yeah. was a nurse, single mother, and stuff. I know what it's like, man. Stuff. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a different, you know, different thing. She worked three to eleven, so you know, we were pretty much there by ourselves, you know, and. Mm-hmm. and it was no such thing as I'm gonna change my shift because I have kids. Mm-hmm. And she had to take what was there, and she did a she did a fantastic job, man, raising us. Yeah. How old were you when you got interested in boxing? I I started boxing at the age of 11. Um, a crazy story, man. Um, at at that point, you know, I had started, you know, because I had got picked on for so long, I had started becoming the aggressor. Mm-hmm. You know, and and then I would always want to fight guys first before they got a chance to jump on me. I always, I always thought if a kid was walking, I didn't know him. I always wanted to fight because I thought he was going to attack me because I was so small. So my cousin um, actually saw Roar in the newspaper, and um, he had just won the uh, 1984 Junior Olympic Nationals. And he said, man, you, you love to fight, man. You... You know, we should go to the gym. So me and my two cousins went to the gym, and um, you know, we started we started at it. And Dick Roy, um, you know, had had us train at the uh, local boys club, and um, you know, I went in there, you know, no experience or anything, and I picked up the fight game really, really quick because I I played every sport, man. I was a you know athlete. You know, I played every sport, mm-hmm. small, but played every sport. So I went in there and um, started started boxing, and and um, about a two months later, we had a we had a boxing event, and I had my first amateur fight. Um, two months in in the training, and you know um, I beat a guy who had over 100 amateur fights, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. He was a very good kid, Roger Bonine. Roger Bonine ended up turning pro. He was undefeated for a long time. Um, but he, he, um, Big Roy, the whole time I was fighting this guy, he kept saying, you smoking them, you smoking them. And I'm like, 
you know, I didn't know what he was saying. He just said, just just keep doing what you're doing. And after the fight was over, he gave me the nickname Smoke. After that, that Bowman fight? Yeah, from that first from that first amateur fight against a kid named Roger Bonai. He was from um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And what was your total amateur record? I couldn't find it on the internet. I don't know why. Yeah, because I didn't have a lot of amateur fights, man. I never fought open. I, I think I had 10 fights. Oh, wow, man. So yeah, you're like learning yeah. on the job, man. Right, right. I only had 10 fights, man. Um, so you went to a gym at like 11? Yes. And you didn't have an amateur fight. Why is that? Well, well, you know, um, I, I was doing a lot of junior, junior. I did the, the 10 junior fights, you know, and at a certain point in my amateur career, Big Roy decided that we would train for a couple of years without getting without any of us doing any fights. Mm-hmm. So he called and called his school. So he took all of us back to school. And then, you know, during those times, they, they, we would go on, on trips. But remember, I was so small that it was never really nobody at those events for me to fight. Mm-hmm. So I, I couldn't really get a lot of experience. And then once I, I stepped up and um, I, I, I was 14, I ended up going to the regionals at the um, Silver Glove Regionals, and I fought a guy, and I, I was disqualified um, in that event. The guy, I hit him with a body shot. He went down, so a low blow, it disqualified me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't, I didn't really get a chance to do a lot of amateur fights, and then I took off. Um, you know, I, I, I took off boxing for about a year, maybe a year and a half, and then I turned pro. And what made you decide to turn pro? What happened? Well, I, I I had actually became, I thought I wanted to be a, a street kid. You know, I I, sh- I, I went, uh, I turned left, mm-hmm. and I wanted to hang out with my friends and, 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 and stay around and not do anything. And, and I almost blew my, my career. You know, my everything that I wanted, almost lost on a simple ride in the car with some friends when I know I didn't have any license, they didn't have any license, you know, but I thought it was a friend of his family member's car and they jumped out of the vehicle. And I was stuck, you know, pretty much holding the bag, you know, you know, with the vehicle. And, you know, I was, you know, I, I got took home because I was a juvenile. And, you know, from that point going forward, I knew that um, I had to get myself together, you know, so that I wouldn't, you know, get in any, any, any trouble. And, and I did so. So, you know, I ended up, you know, turning pro. Big Roy thought it was best that I turn pro because of my style, you know, was more suited for being a professional fighter than it was for being an amateur fighter. Because, you know, back in the amateur days, back during you know, that time, guys just threw punches. They, they just, they judged it on pretty much who threw the most punches. Mm-hmm. And I have never been that type of fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always tried to take guys up with punches and, and you know, fought my own way, my own style. So he turned me pro at 17. Mm-hmm. And do you remember who you turned pro against and yeah. what the day was and what the outcome was? I, I remember, uh, I can't remember his name, but I know it was um, July uh, 14. Um, uh, 1990, I I fought a guy from, I want to say he's from Miami. I was 110 pounds, man. I was 17, 110 pounds. Hmm. And I ended up knocking him out in the second round. I think it was the second hmm. round. I thought it, you know, I can't get on my boxing rack. I don't know why. They, they take it away from me after a certain time every time I go in, but I thought it was the first round. I thought. It, may have, it, may have been, it may have been the first round. Hmm. Yeah, it was the first round. It was the first round. Hmm. It was the first round. So I'm yes. start, man. Yeah. And how did you feel after getting your first one as a pro? I, I felt great. The, mm-hmm. the only, the only, the only uh, thing that 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 hurt me was in the, when I got in the back, man, and I, and I realized what my check was. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was under the impression that I was I was rich. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and, and when you and when you feel you know, you consider yourself a professional athlete, you know. I, I didn't realize that, you know, I was only going to go home with 
$300 minus the 33% that was taken out of my purse. Wow. And then uh, and then on top of that, the other fees that was coming out of my purse, I went home with $130 on my first pro fight. Mm. You know, so, yeah, <laughs> I, I was kind of like, man, what did I get myself into? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, you know, I just couldn't believe the fact that that's all I received, man. You know, so the fight itself was great. I mean, I loved it, man. But I just didn't feel like I could make a actually real living mm-hmm. and 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 provide for myself off of what I was getting at that point in time. Yeah. That's depressing when you got to give other people money. <laughs> when you oh, yeah. Most, most, most definitely so. <laughs> most definitely so. Yeah. Well, then in your third fight, you had your first loss against Scott Phillips. What right. happened in that fight? Well, Scott Phillips, man, was was actually he was a much bigger guy. If you look at his record and you look at the guys he fought, we we had lost our license, man. The state of Florida, the commissioner, um, because Roy fought a guy who was not the guy he said he was fighting. Hmm. He was a they called it an imposter fight. So Roy fought a guy. He knocked him out. So what they did, they took away the license here. So we were trying. They were trying to get me an opponent. He had previously fought a guy from my from my team, and he he lost to the guy. And but the guy fought at 140. He normally fought, I think, 140. So they couldn't find a guy for me. I felt like I could beat anybody. And then on top of that, like I said, I got paid 130 dollars. I went. I requested to go up to six round fight so I could make more money because mm. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, what could I do with $130 again? Mm. So I went up, fought a bigger guy and requested more money and he just, he just I hustled me, he, he wore me down but quite honestly, I felt I won the fight um, and he felt I won the fight, but it was here in my hometown, it was close he won the decision um, I ended up sparring with him after that I punished him in sparring because I, I wanted him to know that he really couldn't beat me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I learned a lesson. You know, I, I realized that I can't, and being a professional athlete, there's a lot coming with that. Mm-hmm. And you also have to stay in your lane. You know, you can't go outside your weight class and challenge a guy unless you're really physically and mentally prepared to face that guy. And I wasn't prepared um, to face a guy at that point in time with his record. He had a lot of fights. He had been in there with a lot of guys, and he was the much bigger guy. So, you know, I learned my lesson about fighting the bigger guy at that point in time. How did you feel like after that, or like directly after that? Do you remember how you felt? I felt horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there was always this thing that me and Roy had. We would always say to each other, we're going to put our undefeatedness on the line. So I felt bad because I couldn't say that to him anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, and we always would pray with each other, and we always say we're putting our undefeatedness on the line. You know, it's a little thing that we would always say to each other. And then, so I think after I lost, I think I was, he, he, the first fight back, he got ready to say it, and I think I corrected him and said, you're putting your undefeatedness on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we both just laughed at it, you know. But, you know, it was, I felt horrible, man, you know, because I, I didn't want to lose, man. I'm an athlete, man. I never want to lose the fight, man. But but I did, man. Yeah, it sucks, man. But it's good when it happens early, cause you're like, yeah, you know. It, it, it helped me. It helped me. It really did. It, you know. And, and I know this is, you know, off of the the subject, but what I, I've said to people, I, I I never wanted Roy to lose, but I wish he had lost early if he was going to lose, mm-hmm. because you know you have. I had a whole a lot of time to deal with the fact that I was defeated. Mm-hmm. And I knew that that meant that I had to make adjustments and make change. But when you go forever and forever and ever, just dominate, dominate, when you lose, you know, later on when you older, man, it, it, I think it can play with your mind a little That's, bit. I swear to God, I was just gonna say that to you. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't even think you were there yet. But yeah, yeah most definitely. You age better. When you get older, yeah. you, you can deal with it better, with everything. Yeah. Yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah. And then you went on a nice winning streak, and you won like 10 in a row, and then you mm-hmm. lost for the second time against Greg Torres. What did you think after right. that loss? What happened there? Well, Greg Torres' fight was one of those fights, man, where, you know, I, I, I say this, and 
the only way for you or anybody to understand is that you have to watch the tape. Mm-hmm. Um, when I fought Greg Torres, I fought him in New Jersey. Um, Greg Torres, um, he caught he caught me at the right time. I my mind was not on Greg Torres. My mind was on Roberto Garcia. I had that fight set. Mm-hmm. Um, I was on a promotional tour with Roy, promoting that fight, Roberto Garcia. I got in the fight with Greg Torres. Everything was going smooth. Um, and what I mean by you had to watch the fight, there was a spot in the fight where I realized that Greg Torres had icy hot on his body. Mm-hmm. So what I did, and this is during the fight, get that fight and you watch it. I smell myself, reach out and smell him while the fight is going on. I went back to the corner. I said, Coach Murk, he had something on him and it's burning the hell out of my eyes. He said, what? He called a referee. He said, Ralph, he got something on him that's burning my fire's eyes. The referee didn't even come to our corner. He backed back in the corner like shit. You on your own, buddy. No. So, Cole Murray looked at me and said, you got to go. You just got to fight. That next round, Greg Torres broke me with a shot. Then we bumped heads, he cut me. So I'm sitting there. I didn't even have a real cut man in my corner. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, we thought that I was just going to blow through Greg Torres. So I'm in there fighting Greg Torres. He has icy hot on his body. I'm cut. I'm bleeding. Mario, who was my, my second in the corner, as Coach Murk put the medicine in the eye, he was working the cut. Mario was wetting, he wet the, the medicine that he was putting in my eye. So Greg Torres had substance on his body that's burning me real bad. Now the medicine that Coach Murk is putting in my eye is burning me because Mario didn't know what he was doing. He was wetting. He, as soon as Coach Murphy put it in, he rinsed it right into my eye. So I'm sitting there fighting Greg Torres. You watch the fight. I'm sitting there fighting him toe-to-toe. Hmm. You know, but what that fight showed me, I didn't get it until afterwards. Roy came to me in the dress room pretty much in tears. She said, I have to say this to you. He said, you showed me tonight that you have everything it takes to become champion of the world. And I didn't understand what he meant. But when I watched the tape, I dug deep in that fight. That was the first fight that I actually had to dig deep in because I was hurt. I couldn't even see Roy. You, if you watch the fight, he's calling me and I'm looking around, I'm squinching my eyes. I couldn't even see him. Hmm. And after the fight was over, I had to go to the hospital because I had a bad cut. We bumped heads. And we met in the lot, in the, in the um, as we were going, um, going down mm-hmm. Torres was when we pushed the button he was actually going down and we Coach Murray said hey man what you have on your what you have on your body man and at this point in time he smelled like soap <laughs> Coach Murray said man what you have on your body and he said uh, I just have on my body what I normally have on my body I just put the same stuff I always put on me, on myself mm-hmm. and then, you know we said Coach Murray said to him man you don't swear have nothing on your body like that. And I said, don't worry about it, coach. You know, so I, I dug deep in the fight. Just watch the fight. Because I don't make excuses, man. You beat me, you beat me. I don't make excuses. Mm-hmm. You watch the fight, you'll see me smell my stuff. I think it's like the third or fourth round. And you're going to see me lean out and smell him. I couldn't believe that, you know, he had something on him and he got, he got in my eyes. And it burned like I don't know what. But like I said, it was a learning experience. And, and I'm glad I went through that. Okay, so the ref had to smell that. That's nuts, man. Yeah, he had to, but again, he was from New Jersey also. That's so crazy. But but it's what it is. Mm-hmm. That's strange. Like like what kind of sport it is, though. You know, like no, <laughs> no, you could just do whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 sometimes it, it comes to that, man. That's crazy. You could be fighting like championship level fights for ten years and be wrapping your gloves and and like wrapping your hands up and stuff. And cement. And right. keep getting away with it. Right, you you can do that, and and, and I I experienced that in Puerto Rico, you know, with mm-hmm. when, when I fought against um, Seda, Trinidad was his trainer. Oh yeah. And I, and I experienced that, you know, doing that fight. I sure did. Hmm. 
And he was, what was he in Trinidad? With Trinidad? He, Daniel Sato was trained by Felix Trinidad. Oh, okay. See, that, and, Bernard and, Hopkins caught. He uh, did. He, yeah. called, he called him. He called him, but I had the same same issue. I sent uh, Billy Lewis over to Sato's dressing room, and I said to them before he went, I said, listen, do not let him make a cast with his gloves, with his, with his wraps. And he's okay. And even that fight, you can watch that fight. You know, they, you see, it took him a while to come out. And um, the commissioner, you know, he made a real cast on that kid's hand. The commissioner said, well, you know, Billy, you can see Billy arguing with the guy on the Showtime, um, you know, Showtime fight. Billy's arguing with him, saying that you can't do that. And then the commissioner, Puerto Rican commissioner said, we in Puerto Rico. This is not New York. We can, what we say goes. So Billy argue, argue, argue. But the good thing about that is, you know, you fighting on HBO on Showtime, everything is about a second. So while he's in there arguing, I'm getting loose, I'm sweaty, I'm ready to fight. So, you know, I don't know if he was able to even get warm good because of the argument, but it was a valid argument. You know, he actually, they actually made a real cast on, on Sater's hand. It didn't help Sater. And quite naturally, and I like Trinidad a lot, man, but you, ever since Bernard caught him with the cast, you tell me how many people he knocked out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I said the same thing. Yeah, that's so, true. you know, it, it, they, when, you know, there's so many tricks that they do, man. They skin the glove back, they, they make cast, you know, with the, with the gall, with the gall. It's just so many different things that they do. Mm -hmm. And you have to be seasoned and, and pay attention and have somebody that's on your team watching you know so that they won't do that to you hmm. yeah. Yeah, i remember the first time i saw you it was on the undercard of james tony and roy jones and you were fighting with Berto garcia yes and like before i thought you had like you looked like you had like at least 80 90 amateur fights i thought you just had a lot and i thought you were like it you were like still fighting because after this fight you got more aggressive you know yeah. Did you do that on purpose? Did you become no? No, no. no I, I, I think that Merck wanted me to be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. I, um, so I stepped it up. But my nature is boxer. My nature is is boxing. You know, um, the way I was taught, Big Roy taught us to fight backwards. Mm -hmm. You know, he he always preached you cannot become champion till you fight backwards. We never really even trained uh, so much to fight inside. We were always taught to hit and not be hit. So being with Coach Merck, he made me more aggressive. And it's not really, it really wasn't something that I was, hey, I'm just going to be an aggressive guy. It just, it just happened because I was with him. You know, the, the Roberto Garcia fight was a, was a good fight. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I felt I won the fight, you know, but um, they didn't see it my way, but I felt I won that fight. Uh, uh, HBO had me winning the fight. You know, and a lot of reporters ringside had me win in the fight. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it was, it, I couldn't win a fight. I'm fighting Dave Hoyer's fighter who he, he managed for very well at the time. And he was Bob Brand's fighter on Bob Brand's car, you know, undefeated kid. And there was no way I was going to win that fight unless mm -hmm. I knocked him out. How would you feel going into that fight? You didn't have a big amateur career and it's the biggest audience you've ever been in front of. Were you kind of nervous going in there? I was. I was ex extremely nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I don't know how. I can't. This is this is strange, but, for example, I cannot do a play. And, you know, like if you had a play or show, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get on stage and, and read a poem or do anything like that. But I can get in front of that same crowd and fight. Mm -hmm. So... Me getting there, getting in the fight with Roberto Garcia in front of that, that large group of people, it, it didn't bother me. You know, I, I felt like I, I belonged there. I felt like that was a fight that, that I could win. And I didn't know anything about him other than he was 16, you know. I didn't know him. Um, and I, I didn't even watch tape on him. So uh, I... I I definitely felt like I belonged there. And I knew that from what I was told, he had a, a bigger um, amateur background than I, than I did. Mm-hmm, yeah. And uh, I was gonna, uh, why were you nervous then? You were nervous about, about the fight? I, but... 
I, w- I was nervous because I knew that it was so much riding on the whole card itself. Hmm. You know what I mean? It, you know, me and Roy are so close, man, that it sounds crazy, but I feel his pain or I feel the joy and the excitement that's associated with him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was weighing on me. I knew how big the fight was for him. I knew how big the fight was for me. Uh, I knew how big the fight was for Pensacola. I knew how big the fight was for Skarreen. Um, and it, and with that, you know, it, it made me nervous. But I was never, ever nervous because of him. Mm-hmm. But more so because of what was riding on the event. I knew going forward what what I can get out of that, me winning that fight. Mm-hmm. Now you and Roy are like brothers and stuff, and that night was so different for both of you. That night sucked for you, but for Roy, Say it again was now. I said Say you, one and, more time. you and Roy were like brothers. Yeah. So that night kind of sucked for you, but was great for him. So how how did you feel at the end of the night after it was all over? You, you know what, man? It it felt the same. To be honest with you, because I didn't think I lost the fight. You know, um, I, I was promised a, a bonus for winning the fight. Mm-hmm. I still got my bonus. My team thought I won the fight. So, I, you know, I had I had the I had the loss on my record, but at the same time, you know, it was not um, it was not a problem for me because I thought I won the fight. You know, uh, Harold Letterman had me win the fight. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's a real respected judge. You know, and, you know, I felt like I won the fight. And I had my hero, man, watching ringside, man, which was Sugar Atlanta, man. He he was sitting there, and he was talking to me through the fight, man. Mm-hmm. So I, I he felt I won the fight. So, man, I, I was not even concerned about that at all. What was Sugar Atlanta saying to you? What did he say? He was cheering me on, man. He was cheering mm-hmm. me on. He was just, you know, he was telling me, let throw more punches, be more aggressive, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, I shuffled once. He, she stood up and clapped. <laughs> you know, and we, we actually, it was kind of like we were communicating without communicating. You know what I mean? I'm looking at him smiling. He's looking at me like, you know, because we were part of his, of his, his, his you know, his little boxing uh, team at one point. He, he was here in town, you know, so, um, you know, I've been knowing him for a couple of years and, and, and had a, have a good relationship with him. So, you know, he was, he was happy to see me on that stage. Mm, that's cool, man. That's like an awesome story right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And then you you fought, uh, let me see, hold on. You fought a way more experienced guy in Harold Warren in your next fight? Yeah. What was it like yeah. fighting Harold? <laughs> that had to be, uh, honestly, man, Harold, Harold Warren had to be the toughest guy <laughs> to date that, I, that I've ever faced, man. He's five, two and a half. Yeah. I mean, I, and at the same time, <laughs> I, I believe that that was one of my best performances of my career. You know, I I dominated him, and and you know I hit him with some of my best shots, and he would say to me, "He hit like a bird." <laughs> you know, I'm like, "Dang, hey, man, I hit you my best shot, man." <laughs> you know, you hit like a bird. Then you know, and and he he made me understand what a veteran really is. And he was hitting me with shots, man, that the referee couldn't see. He was beating my hips. He was beating my thighs. I, I have pictures from that fight where punches are raining. His glove was on my thigh. He would get me on the side where the referee couldn't see. And he beat my shoulders. He beat my he beat my hip. And, I mean, I got in the dress room, man. I almost passed out. Dude. I'm so serious, man. And... Yeah, you know, I, I was in the in the dressing room and I was trying to recover, man. I was exhausted, man. And um, they kept saying, "Man, somebody want to see you, man. Somebody want to see you." And I was like, "Who?" They said, "Donald Trump." <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I mean, stop playing. So I go <laughs> out. I'm serious. I go out, and you can see Trump walking to me. He got out of his seat, man, to come to me. He said, "Man, you may be one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen." In, in person. I was like, what? And I have the picture, man, and my eyes are real big. If you look on my Facebook page, it's a picture of me shaking his hand. I think John Scully put it on my page. <laughs> and um, that was from that night, man. It was, it was a 
it was a, a, a very, very good experience, man. I had a great time that night, man. How does his hair look in person? <laughs> hey, oh, 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 oh. It, 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 it looks just like it did on, on, on TV, man. <laughs> he, he, he had a nice beef, but you know it looks exactly the way it looked on, 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 on the on the print. I can show you that. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ugliest hair I ever saw in my life. <laughs> yeah, man. But you know, I, I just felt so good, man. You know, him getting out of his seat, man. He got out of his seat, man, to come yeah. back and just to tell me that. Yeah, and I felt, I felt, I felt very good, honest man. Oh okay. yeah. But I did, I did put on a performance. Yeah. I, I really, I really put on that performance that night. I mean, you, you look at my record, you look at his record, you look at the guys that I face, man. And and and, and, and this, this is jump ahead, man. I, I don't think, I don't think that I would ever ever get the credit that I deserve. You know, I think it's a gift and it's a curse. For what being in Pensacola and fighting and being managed by Roy, you know, the, the, the gift is that I was able to get on his undercard and fight my way. He didn't give me a, he didn't give me anything. You know, I, I, you know, he's my manager, so I paid him a percentage of my purse. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He's my manager, and he promoted me, and I paid a percentage of my purse to him. Um, into his company. Uh, but I fought my way through. You know, you look at my guys who I fought. I fought Kevin Kelly mm. in 96. He was 40 and was he 41 and 1 or 42 and 1? I had I had 20 fights. Mm. No amateur background. And I gave him I gave him all he ever wanted and some. You know, and, and, I, I've, and, I've, and I've never and I've never turned down um, any no opponent. You 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 look at him, and 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 I fought him, and I I was never afraid to fight him, and never turned him down. Yeah, that was you know, too, obviously. Uh, yeah, but you know, I the 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 bad part is, you know, people, some of the the networks, they were so furious with Roy because he controlled his own shot that they took it out on me. You know, they mad at me. It seemed like because of something that he did. And then, you know, I had have, I have some writers mad at me or want to compare me to him, or we, we're two different fighters. Mm. You know, I, if, 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 if I had his, his skills with my skills, I'd be 100 and 0. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just how I look at that. Mm. Yeah. And then, how did it feel winning your first professional championship after Harold won when you, when you beat him? Oh, man, it felt great. Um, it felt, it felt really good. I, I felt like, you know, I accomplished something. You know, what I wanted to do, I did that night. Um, you know, like I said, he was, it was a tough, tough fight. But that is why you pay your dues. That is why you train every day. Boxing is one of those, it's a very, very honest sport. You know, if you don't train and and you don't live right, you know, you, you know, you party, it's going to show fight night. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be able to see exactly what you did or you didn't do. You know, mm -hmm. if you treat your body right, then you may not, you may not, you may not win the fight, but you got a better chance at it. And you recover a whole lot quicker if you get hurt or something like that. Your endurance play a part. Mm -hmm. And, and your success uh, fight night but I felt like I accomplished everything that I dreamed of and and, and some you know when I became champ mm -hmm. so it was like mission accomplished then, you thought? yeah it was mm -hmm. much so. and then you fought yeah. James Creighton at the garden how did it feel fighting at the garden for the first time oh it, it felt it felt great the thing about James Creighton fighting James Creighton. I fought James Creighton with a torn ACL. Mm. I tore my ACL on man playing basketball. We had a um, um, basketball team here, you know, me and pickup. I went to the goal, blew my ACL, um, came back, um, I played in the game. We had a, a celebrity game against Pernell Whitaker's team. He brought a team from Virginia down. I played with a torn ACL like a clown, young, did not really know him. 
and hurt my knee that much more. Got in a fight with James Craig. Didn't know James Craig. Then hadn't, hadn't watched any film on James Craig. Come to find out, James Craig moved just more than just as much as me or more. So here I am fighting James Craig with a torn ACL. Couldn't run. Didn't run before the fight. Used the stab master. My first time ever using using the stab master. Used the stab master. Fought him in New York. They had a blizzard. It was freezing cold. So of course my knee was hurting the whole time. He ran around the ring, ran around the ring. I dropped him in the fourth round. I dropped him in the fourth round, tore my right knuckle up. My knuckle was still damaged from that fight. So now I have a torn ACL. This guy's moving around. My knuckle, I can't make a fit. And I'm trying to get to this guy. So I'm following this guy, following this guy. Can't really hit him with nothing with my left hand. Didn't knock him out, I think, until the 11th, the, the 10th or 11th round. Hmm. So, you know, it, it was... It was great fighting in the guard, man. It was just so many different things that led me to that fight and um, me getting through the fight and winning the fight was was, was great. Um, but you know, he was a tough fighter, man. He, was, he had good hand speed and good power, but but I I, I, over, I overcome I came all that. Mm-hmm. Was that the undercard to the Ray Jones uh, Murky Sosa fight? Is that what yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember that blizzard. Yeah. How does it feel being from Pensacola, being in a blizzard? <laughs> What's that like? Oh man, it was it was it was crazy. I have never in my life. We of course we we don't have snow. Yeah. But you know we got there, man. It was they had um, tractor trailers covered with snow, and mm-hmm. you know at that point in time it's one of the worst blizzards in New York. Mm-hmm. You know, and then <laughs> the funny thing is when we got there, it was giving us all these different rules to watch out for. They had this. They, they called it Black Ice. Hmm. I think it was Black yeah, Ice or black something ice. like that. Black Ice? All right. And, and all the, all, yeah, all the Southerners, we didn't we know anything about the Black <laughs> Ice. So, you know, we were walking around and bam, four or five people hit the floor at the same time. You know, it, it was a mess, man. It was yeah. a mess. Man, I, I got this hill outside my, like, like, like maybe a quarter mile outside uh, where my house is. And yeah. every time it snows, my car ends up like doing like twists down the hill. Man, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah we, 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 only thing we have is the, the hurricanes, man. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's the crazy thing there. The hurricanes. Yeah. There's always something somewhere, you know? Yes, yeah, most definitely. California got earthquakes. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. Then you the thought, about it, yeah, we, you can't, I don't think you can know, you know, you don't know when they're coming. No, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, the, these the hurricanes, you know, you got you got two or three days to get your stuff and go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we know when it's going to hit. You know, we know pretty much, you know, what area it's going to hit in. You yeah. know, you can be prepared, but some of the other stuff, man, you just, you, just, you, you know, you got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. I find it amazing yeah. that you, you could tell when you're going to have an earthquake, they just say some fish, like certain fish swim somewhere in a certain way. Oh, really? Yeah, it's weird, man. Fish I didn't know note. that. Yeah. Fish know something. There's a certain kind of fish. I don't know what it is, but... Mm. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Weird. Weird but true. Mm. Then you fought Then you fought Javier Diaz. He fought yeah. everybody. Did you feel his experience in that fight? It was kind of quick, wasn't it? I think you knocked him out. Yeah, no, I, I knocked him out in the... In the, in the um, Second? Wait a minute, Javier Diaz. Which one is that? Javier Diaz. Where did I fight him at? I'm not even sure. I'm, I can't even get on my box right now. Um, I'm trying to think how it is. Why, why I fought him? Man. That's all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that was quick. I think I fought him in California. Yeah, it was like two rounds. Yeah. Two rounds, yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't, no. Yeah. I, I ran him into an uppercut, man, and, <laughs> and it was it was lights out. Hmm. It, you know, that that was, you know, that, was, that, was, that wasn't really a test. You know, but I know he he had been in there with a lot of people, but no, it was that wasn't anything for me. To be honest. Yeah. Then you had that classic fight with Kevin Kelly. Mm. Arturo Gotti, like, but unfortunately yeah. Kevin was Arturo Gotti. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, yes. What yes. Was oh, Arya Diaz. I'm sorry, Arya Diaz was in Pensacola. I did that fight. I had just had my knee surgery. That was a tune-up fight to see if my knee was okay. Mm-hmm. That, that's what that was. I fought him here at the at the, um, at the fairgrounds, yes. And then I fought Kevin Kelly in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Uh, what 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 a fight, man! Yeah. 
I, I, I tell you, man, I, I've never seen HBO make a commercial out of anything. But, uh, you know, they made a commercial out of that fight. Mm -hmm. And I, I received love and hate from that fight. <laughs> I, I had a guy here local. He came to me and said, how you let that guy knock you out? I'll slap you. You know, I'm like saying, you got to be kidding me, man. You know, and, but I also ran across a lot of people that said that was the best fight that they've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a, it was a great, great, great fight, man. Um, I, I don't remember what happened, man, after the second knockdown. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember until after, after I watched the tape. So most of it, I was just fighting on emotions. You know, um, I I I knew I was in there with the the top. He was one of the top dogs at that time, man. Mm. And to be honest with you, I didn't even really know Kevin. You know, I, I really didn't watch. I didn't even watch tape on him before the fight. Mm. I I I I just got in there. I, I was eighteen and three. I got in there and I fought and faced the best guy at the time. Um, and Kevin Kelly, and like I said, I gave him all that he can handle. Um, Kevin, Kevin, man, he was he he's he was the fastest guy at that point in time that I have ever had ever been in the ring with fighting. You know, I fought with Roy, but it was a little different. You know, with ten ounce gloves on, um, and he caught me with some shots that I, of course, I didn't see him, but. I didn't understand how he was able to capitalize on me, but he had so much more experience, man, than I did. And after the fight, he said it best. He said, in a couple of years, Danny gonna be champ of the world. Yeah. And um, he gave me respect, and I appreciate that. Um, but he he was able to do stuff to me that, uh, like I said, I wasn't, I didn't quite understand um, until I actually I got back and watched the tape. Um, but, you know, in, in that, that round before he knocked me out, Kevin was actually quit. He actually quit in the corner. You know, he was like, they asked him, he said, can you tell your eyes? He said, no, I can't see. And um, he said, well, what do you, I, I think the, when he said, no, I can't see, the doctor should have stopped the fight. Mm -hmm. And the reason the doctor didn't stop the fight was because the doctor was from Pensacola, Florida. And he apologized to me. He said he was sorry. He said he know he should stop the fight. He said, but he didn't stop the fight because he felt that like, that they might try to protest with him being from Pensacola. So he gave him another round. <laughs> that next mm -hmm. round cost me everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I had, I had a friend of mine. His, his stepdad would always tell me that I wouldn't be anything. I can't, I would not achieve what I wanted to achieve until I get knocked out. Hmm. And I thought he was crazy. And, you know, not to say anything like that to me, but it, it actually, it worked. What that did for me, it made me get up and run twice a day. It made me train that much harder. And I think it, if you look at my record after I lost to Kevin Kelly, I showed it. Um, and, and the other side of the, the thing with Kevin Kelly, uh, was that I, after the loss, I called Kevin Kelly, his house. I got his number from um, my secret person at HBO, mm -hmm. who I would never tell his name. Um, and he gave me his phone number. And I called Kevin, and I, I asked him to fight me in a rematch. I had got word through Roy that HBO was going to pay they would pay him a half a million dollars if he if he would if he would take the fight. Mm -hmm. You know that was the negotiating start for half a million dollars. It was such a good fight. They were gonna really pay for the fight. They told me to start off at, with a half a million dollars and see how I can go. You know, see see where I can get him to stop at. I had got all the way up to a million dollars, and Kevin said no. Mm -hmm. He didn't want the fight. And then he finally said to me, "Man, I'm tired of talking to you. <laughs> yeah, man, talk to my wife." So he put Valerie on the phone. And I ended up talking to Valerie. I talked to him on the phone for two hours. And then I ended up talking to Valerie for an hour. 
And then she finally said, listen, she was managing him at the time. She finally said, we don't want to fight. We don't need you. And I said, I respect that. So, as you know, he went on and he fought maybe three or four more fights after that. And I stopped Kevin. Every time Kevin had a fight, I was ringside. I put on the suit and I went to his fight. Every fight he had. And I sat that ringside. Mm. Even the fight when he fought Hamid, I sat that ringside. And I, and I did my part. You know, I started training, like I said, and I went on the win streak after that. Mm -hmm. So, just in case he would ever fight me, I'll be prepared. My record will show that I paid my dues and I'm ready to fight whomever the top person is. Yeah. And I know that you got better after every loss. I like that, too. You know? That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah you, you, you have to do that. If you, if, you, if you try to be honest with yourself, and you, you go work. You see what you did right, and you see what you did wrong, and you make those corrections. And that's what I try to do. Yeah, but a lot of people try to ignore it, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I, I don't. So, you know, you, you're doing that, like I said, the sport is so honest. Mm -hmm. you, you know, they have no choice but to look at it. And sometimes the tape don't lie. That tape don't lie. You gonna, you better look at that tape and tell what's going on. Yeah. And w when you were talking to Kevin, trying to get him to fight you, like, was it strictly about, was it two hours of just talking about the fight, maybe? Or was it, like, other things, too? What no, it was strictly about? fight. I, I had no reason to talk <laughs> to him other than the fight. You know, it was strictly two hours just me trying to, to convince him to take the fight. We can do the fight in New York. We can do the fight here. You know, the money, you know, I give you options. You, If I beat you this time, I, I give you another fight. And HBO pays money for the third fight. And... You know, we just kept going back and forth, back and forth. Then when I got on the phone with his wife, it's the same thing. But but then I realized when she was more, not no, but hell no, you're not fighting him. So I, I ended the conversation. I started with her. I started talking about other things because I knew at that point in time that she was in control of the situation and she wasn't going to let it happen. Even if he wanted to fight, she didn't think it was going to be a small fight for him to take. Hmm. Yeah. How's it feel in retrospect, like looking back now? How, what do you and Kevin say to each other when you when you see each other right now? Is it <laughs> cool? You know, he, when I when I talked to him, I actually talked to Kevin two weeks ago, hmm. and when we when we talk, he, you know, he's always talking to me about me fighting and. Um, about what weight I can fight at if I fight. You always talk about uh, Humberto Soto. Hmm. If, if I ever fight Humberto Soto, he can tell me how to beat him, you know, and, you know, we talk about stuff like that. We talked about the Corrales fight um, the other day. He told me, he told me that, you know, I spar with Corrales getting ready for your fight. And I was like, yeah, I know. Um, so we, we, you know, it, 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 it the the relationship is cool, you know. He, you know, he talked to me about training, you know, and talking about what he's doing, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I was trying to get an interview with him too, but I think he's too busy. <laughs> well, I'm sure he, he he probably he'll do it. He'll yeah. do it. I I will tell him you want to call him. He'll do it. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate it. I love that fight, man. It was hard to like choose anybody that root for, you know. Yeah. It was a great fight, though. It feels good to be involved in, like, a time capsule fight. How's that feel? Like, it feels you know, great, man. Yeah. It, it feels great. You know, I, I sometimes I go on YouTube and I watch it. And then I, I sometimes I, I reminisce on, you know, what people say. You know, someone wrote an article, and I actually saved it. And I, I, I need to frame it and put it up for my kids to be able to see. Hmm. You know, one guy said that that was the greatest featherweight fight ever hmm. and I was like wow you know there, there have been some great featherweight fights you know but I think he, he took it he was saying it because the fight was going back and forth back and forth even when Kevin knocked me down mm -hmm. the sixth round when he knocked me down I came back mm -hmm. in that same round mm -hmm. and I kind of could have won that round or made it a 9-9 mm -hmm. round you see <laughs> what I'm saying yeah. seriously no, you know no, and, no. and every time he would drop me I would get up and I would gather myself, you know, mind you, I wasn't able to run. I just had knee surgery. I wasn't able to run. Hmm. 
You see what I'm saying? I was just, I had just had my surgery right before I fought. Um, the, I, I can't think of his name right now. Um, the guy you just asked me about. But so I felt great, you know, mentally and everything. You know, it's just um, Kevin caught me. He mm-hmm. caught me jumping in, and he made me he made me pay for that rookie mistake. That rookie mistake cost me. It was luck on his part, you know. He couldn't see nothing. <laughs> no, he couldn't. He couldn't. I mean, it, the easiest thing for me to do is stay back. Yeah. Stay I, remember, back. I remember one time they took a picture in Ring Magazine of his eye, just just his eye. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was a black woman's butt. <laughs> it looked just like a butt. Man. <laughs> it looked like a butt. Uh, a yeah, big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you know, we fought two years later in, in Madison Square Garden, man. So, you know, they had this big, big press conference. I mean, when I say it was packed, they had the press conference in the mock, kind of like weigh in at mm-hmm. Bryant Park in New York. And. Going into the fight, Roy, you know how he know how how to motivate me. He brought me an article that Kevin Kelly said I have to pay feed my kids. Um, he said something. Like he said I'm a kill gainer. Hmm. I was like, whoa, hold up, you know, I'm from I'm from Pensacola Village. I went back to growing up in Pensacola Village. I'm from Pensacola Village. You gonna kill me? Hmm. So when I saw him. I walked up to him in the, in the, in inside the ring. It was packed, people everywhere, but couldn't nobody hear our conversation. And I said, "So you, so you gonna kill me? Now you gonna kill me?" And he was like, "Oh man, no, no, can't, no, can't. It wasn't like that. You know, I was, I was selling tickets, can You know, I was just talking. You know, I'm like, nah, man. I mean, yeah, you can, you can do a lot of things, but you don't say, you don't say that about another fighter. Mm-hmm. And that, that moment in the ring." I got the microphone and I made fun of his eye. <laughs> and people went crazy. They had DMX there. DMX was the hot rapper at the time. He was the hottest rapper at the time. He was there in the ring and I had everybody in that park rolling. You know, he's from New York. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he was really, really mad. His kids were there. <laughs> I put my hand up. I started talking like my hand was his eye. I was like, hey, hey kids, daddy's home. Daddy's home. <laughs> so he looked at me like, you know, he's mad at this point in time. Daddy's home. Daddy's going to kill smoke. So, he, <laughs> so we're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then so I, you know, we, did, we, did, we didn't shove each other or anything like that. They kind of broke it up. I got out of the ring. And then I ended up seeing him again at the weigh-in. And he was like, well, that's at the physical. And he was like, Yo, man, don't let this go to your head, man. Yo, Gannon, don't let this go to your head. You know, Kevin talk real fast, man, real yeah. fast. Yo, Gannon, don't let this go to your head, man. Yo, man, I didn't say that, yo. Don't let this go to your head, yo. You hear me, yo? Like, I was like, nah, bro, you said you're going to kill me? It's showtime. I hope you're in shape. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, so I, I don't know, man, you know, I know the second fight didn't live up to the first fight, but I had to fight him smart. There was there was too much riding on me getting to that next level for me to go and trade and throw bombs with Kevin Kelly. Hmm. Uh, I dominated him. I beat him easily. The judges that, that judged the fight that night, they tried to rob me. They had to fight one eight. One of them had it something like um, only two points, a two-point win for me when I dropped him twice and he didn't win around, hmm. you know? So it, it, it was, if he had, if he had had any success in that fight, hmm. it would have robbed me. Yeah. You know, even, even when I dropped him the second time, Kevin took his mouthpiece out of his mouth, walked over to his corner, turned his back from the referee and the referee saying, Put your mouthpiece in your mouth, Kevin. Cole, I think his name is Cole. Mm-hmm. Put your mouthpiece in your mouth, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Come on, champ. Put your mouthpiece in your mouth. I'm jumping in the corner. Stop the fight. Stop the fight. It's obvious he didn't want to fight anymore. Mm-hmm. And he let him go on. You know, and again, I I, I beat him easily. And, and 
you know, it was very emotional for me because that fight bothered me for two years. Well, let me ask, how so, did you feel walking into the ring to that fight? Were you nervous because he knocked you out before? No. You were ready? For, for whatever reason, that, was, that had to have been one of the calmest walks I've ever had. Hmm. I, I knew that Kevin couldn't beat me. I also knew that, again, I belong. I knew that I deserved to be on that stage and fighting on that level. Despite Merchant criticizes because Roy was this and Roy was my manager, you know, this and that. Um, but if, if I couldn't fight a little bit, Roy being my manager does me no good. There's a lot of fighters, elite fighters, they represent other fighters, they help their fight friends, they, mm -hmm. guys, the guys that are in the gym, they put them on their card. But if those guys can't fight, if I couldn't fight, I would have never made it to that level. Mm -hmm. The only reason I was there is because I belong there. Oh, so, good, yeah, so I felt like there was nothing that uh, Kevin could do to me, you know. Mm -hmm. All I needed to do was be smart. I knew I was in great shape. Um, mentally, I felt great. I was, I just felt stupid. I felt like I was just, just, I was there. I peaked during training camp at the right time. I was prepared. There was nothing he could have done to me that night. So you know, just in. I was I was there. Mm -hmm. You know, I played Phil Collins. Mm -hmm. I can't feel it coming in the air. I that's, was, that's I was fight there. Music. That's fight music. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, was, I was there, man. And there was nothing Kevin could have done that night. Yeah. And then I just wanted to skip back. How did you feel when you when, after you lost to Kevin? You came back and you won the WBC Continental Title. How did you feel about that? That was a very emotional night for me. I had my cousin who actually got me into boxing. Um, that fight was in in New York. Um, who, who'd you win that against? You remember? Um, yes. Hold on one second. Uh, Patrick Simeon. Okay. Patrick Simeon. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Simeon. Um, I I um, I felt I felt I was very 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 nervous going into that fight. Because I didn't know him either. I had never seen him. Mm -hmm. And I just got knocked out cold by Kevin Kelly. So, and then you, you always hear people say, oh, he can't take a punch. Oh, he got this. You know, so so boxing is 90% is mental, man. I, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. You know, so mentally, I was... I was iffy, but I was able to hit the guy with a good shot, and I knocked him out. And my cousin, who got me into boxing, like I said, he was there, and he probably cried more than I did. Hmm. So that, it was a victory that I needed to to get myself going. Yeah. And then, uh, so what was so emotional about it, like, afterwards? Because your cousin was there? No, because of the fact that I, I had just got knocked out, oh, okay. and I, I was hearing a lot of people. I had more naysayers than than any time before. They really were talking about, you know, I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So I know I needed that victory to get me back going. Yeah, that's cool, man. And yeah. I, I had really, I, I said I was going, I was going to quit. Boxing after I lost to Kevin, hmm. I actually had I actually had spent start spending a lot of time in, in Atlanta. I was uh, considering um, doing trying to I tried to do a Chick Fil A franchise. You know, after I lost to Kevin Kelly. No what? What? Uh, yeah, I tried to do a Chick Fil A franchise. Chick Fil A. Uh, Chick Fil A. Yeah. What's that like? Food. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. a chicken fillet. Yeah. Nice. So <laughs> I, I was I, I was going to do a car wash. I, box, I, I I didn't want to I didn't want to box anymore. You know, it, it just it hurt me that bad. Mm. You know, yeah. so I got over it. Spent 
couple weeks, maybe a month in Atlanta. Um, got over it. Came back. Came back hungry. Hmm. Started, like I said, running twice a day. Training hard. Putting in more time. Being at the gym early. Leaving later than everybody. It, it, it really motivated me. Mm-hmm. Now I couldn't, you know, I, I, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't watch the tape. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to watch the tape to get prepared for the rematch, but I couldn't watch the first tape. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's that's what it is. So you just needed some time off and to eat yes. a eat a chick Chick Fil A. <laughs> yes, that's okay. yes. And you're ready yes. to come back. Yeah. Then, so how did it feel after you beat Kevin Kelly? How did that feel? Like to mission accomplished, you came back and beat this guy. How did that feel? Man, that felt great, man. That, that right. felt great. I, I I felt like I was on top of the world. Uh, that was <clears throat> I, I I felt higher winning that fight. Now I look back and think about it than I did when I beat Norwood. Mm-hmm. That fight meant everything to me because I finally was able to conquer the person that stretched me. He really stretched me. I mean, I was really, literally, I was out cold. I mean, to go back in and beat someone who knocked you cold and dominate him the way I dominated him, um, I was really, really high, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I remember coming home and just staying in my house you know, I could I couldn't even go outside for a while, man. Hmm. I was just just that you know, just that high from from that victory. You know, uh, I, I cried in the ring that night. Um, you know, it felt really, really good. You know. Hmm. Um it, it really did, you know. Just just being able to, to conquer <clears throat> him and beat him that night was a great feeling. And what did Kevin say to you? you remember anything? Uh, no. He, he congratulated me, and that was it. That, that, well, they they asked me for a rematch. Um, they asked me for a third fight that night. Mm-hmm. And I told them I'd be honored to do that. You know, um, so I, I had agreed to do that, but, um, you know, I went on and went to a heavier weight class. Um, against Corrales, and um, I moved up in weight because no one would fight me at 26 after I fought him, mm-hmm. pretty much. So um, I did agree to fight him in the only game with the rematch, the third fight. Yeah. I just want to skip back one more time. Just you could say mm-hmm. you could say some quick about these fights. If if nothing really major happened in it, just you don't have to even talk about it if you don't want to. But and okay. what about Alric Jensen? What do you remember about that fight? <laughs> he 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 was a uh, he was a strong guy. Um, he he talked so much junk. I've never fought a guy who <laughs> talked so much junk. I mean, he talked from the way in to the, from the press conference to the way in. And once I turned the heat on um, in the fight, he actually bit me in my chest. Hmm. He bit me in my chest. I mean, literally, he bit me. He was holding on, and you can see his teeth, his bottom teeth print on, on my chest. And I saw the referee, and um, I, I pushed him off me with my with my forearm. And then, right as the, um, I want to say the, uh, I want to say tenth tenth round, mm-hmm. Holyfield walked in and said ringside, <laughs> and me and Ho- me and Holyfield started a conversation, a dialogue as the fight was going on. So right as I got ready to stop him, I, mm-hmm. I leaned over to the rope. I said, watch this, Holy. And I hit it with, I don't know what combination I hit it with, but they stopped the fight. And he went crazy. But I want to say from the 10th round on, man, him had this conversation going on, man. And it was just like, he kept, he was motivating me just, just looking to smile. And he didn't say a whole lot. You know, he moved his eyes up and down like, yeah, yeah. And I'm hitting this guy all these, all these big shots. And I was punishing this guy because he killed, he talked so much junk. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. I looked at the ring, like I said, I looked back at the ring and said something to the fact of, watch this, only watch this. And then the fight was over. <laughs> Did you get to talk to Holyfield after? No, I didn't get a chance to talk to him after the fight. Uh, I want to say that's the night that Roy Ford, yeah, it was Roy Ford and lost to Montel mm-hmm. uh, that night. He got disqualified that night, so, you know, that wasn't a, a good night. So I didn't get a chance. I, we stayed in the hotel room the whole night. Actually, Roy, Roy had re- retired that night, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people, you know, of course, don't know that, but he announced his retirement to me. And I said to him, I said, if you retire, I'll retire. I said, so you, how many million dollars you going to give me so I can live for the rest of my life? <laughs> and he looked at me, and he's like, why you doing me like this? I said, why you doing me like this, dog? You retire, I'll retire. We're going to retire together. Mm-hmm. And he's like, man, you wrong. I said, no, you're wrong. And, of course, you know, he came back and, and destroyed my tail. But, yeah, he was, he was done with boxing. Mm-hmm. He was so upset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just talked to him until like a month ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I saw him, man. We was flying on him. I was going somewhere, but he was, we were on the same flight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was going to Chicago to do the um, video game, and I think he was going into sh- Chicago, too. Um, and that's when we were on the same flight. Who's that? You and who? Me, I was going to do the video game. Um, the, the Fright Night game, mm-hmm. 2004. I was in 2003 and 2004, mm-hmm. and I was flying into Chicago to do the shoot, and he was on the flight, and we talked briefly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, let, let me just ask you about, I'm sure you have something to say about Manuel Medina. What do you remember? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. I destroyed Manuel Medina, man. Now, what I'm going to say about Medina is that I never faced a guy who couldn't really punch. Hmm. No. He had no power at all. I mean, none whatsoever. I like Medina, you know, a lot of respect for what he accomplished, you know, but he couldn't he couldn't punch. And um, me and Medina actually were scheduled to fight November um, 25th, um, 90, God. Was it 90 or was it 2000 or something? I can't remember. Whenever he had the WBC title, he, he beat the guy that took the title from Kevin Kelly. He beat him. Gonzalez, I think his name is. He beat him for the title. And we were, they convinced him to fight. And then something happened, something happened before he signed a contract. They pulled out. So he ended up losing the title. And then they got him to come in and ask him to fight me um, on that card. And I basically destroyed him. You know, you look at his record, man, he fought a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one, no one did what I did to him. Mm-hmm. And even after I destroyed him, he went on to win the world title three more times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three more times. He beat, he beat John Tapia and they robbed him. Mm-hmm. He beat Kevin Kelly mm-hmm. uh, and he beat some other guys. You know, yeah. but he ended up winning the title. He's a five-time world champion. Mm-hmm. Five time. Yeah. So, you know, uh, but he just, yeah, I just, I was just too strong, too big, too strong for him. Mm-hmm. And your arms were like, you're just long and lanky and everything. No, nope. yeah, yeah. He has a long arm too, man. Yeah, he did. He but. has a long, he has a long arm, but he just, he just, he just couldn't punch. Yeah, he liked to fight. Like he liked to do a lot of one twos, I know, and yeah. like he looked like he was like always disassembling and then reassembling. Strange, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he he liked to fight inside. He didn't take advantage yeah. of his long arms. Yes, yes. But he most definitely, most mm. definitely, pitch punch. No. And what about Orlando Soto? Oh my God, Orlando Soto, man. Oh man, he had some long arms. Now, you, you talking about some long arms? That guy, that guy, pretty much can stand up and seem like he can touch his ankles. Man, his arms are just that long, and 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 he was strong. When I say he was strong, oh my God, that dude hit me with a jab, and I felt it, man. I am so serious, man. Um, the the thing about him, 
I I had to fight with Kevin Kelly set up. That fight was signed. And they didn't give me a burger. They gave me one. He was 20. When I fought him, he was 20-something and 29 with uh, 20-something knockouts. He was crazy, man. They, you know, they never, my people never, ever really protected me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They always just let me fight. You want to fight? Well, okay, there you go. They just, let me, just let me fight these guys. Hmm. You know, and, and I fought him. He buckled me. He didn't drop me. But he caught me with a good uppercut. And it just made me mad, man. It, it really made me mad. And I turned the heat on. Hmm. And in the fourth round, I turned the heat on. And I dropped him in the fourth round after being hurt. And then I came back in the fifth round. And he went over and left. And it finished him off. Hmm. But what, what made me be able to get to him was body shots. I started touching his body because he was so doggone strong. I had to wear him down a little bit, you know. Um, but me fighting him outside, it made it more, it was more dangerous for me to fight him outside because he had such long arms and he knew how to put leverage on his punches. Hmm. Yeah. And then you already beat Kevin Kelly. You, you won. You're happy about that. And then your next fight mm -hmm. is Diego Corrales. Mm-hmm. In Bernard the, Harris was the next fight. Yeah, after Kevin I, Kelly. Just, I, I was looking at this right. I wasn't even going to talk about Bernard Harris, but yeah, okay. Go ahead. If, if something happened that no, that you no, don't talk not, about? no, 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 no. The only thing about that fight was that I was excited about fighting, getting through with Kevin Kelly. So that fight was a dull fight for me mentally. Yeah, that's yeah. why I just. But the next, yeah. But you fought so many big names, though, Derek. You fought so many big names that I didn't even want to waste time on the like little names. You know? Yeah, I got you. I <laughs> you got you. I, mean? I got you. Yeah. You got too much to say. We already did too much, like so much time. You know. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just had a, a successful career. What could you say, man? But it's cool. It's cool. what it's did you it's think it's about fighting Diego Corrales? You moved up, right? I moved up in weight, and I learned a lesson with with Diego. Diego made me realize that I need to be back down at 126. Mm. And and it, what what a lot of fans don't understand is that you have some fighters that will sweat, come down, come from 170, 180 to make 30, and be be that way, way in fight night, they be back up to 50, 45, 50, and they gain all that weight, and it makes it difficult when you're fighting a smaller guy moving up fighting a guy like that because for for two rounds I dominated Corrales I mean I dominated him hmm. and Corrales caught me with a I think a hook and he put me down he dropped me mm -hmm. um, that that leading into the fight there was a lot of pressure on me to win the fight and there was so much so many deals outside of boxing that was on that. Um, you know, I was working on the shoe deal. I was working on, you know, other things because I felt that, and the company felt that I was going to win the fight. I was going to be champ of the world against Corrales. So they sitting at ringside. You know, there, there were rumors that the winner would fight Floyd. Mm. You know, and, and they, so... I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I have all this going on. And then I get in the fight, he drops me. I get up, he attacks some more. I'm, I'm going under his punches. Um, maybe one or two landed the second time. I took a knee, I was a little dizzy, quite honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I was dizzy. The referee said eight, I stood up. Oh, he said, give me gloves. I walked to him and I handed him my gloves. He said, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. Just as clear I'm saying it to you now. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, that's it, it's over. Then I said, what, man? I said, I'm fine. And he stopped the fight. Mm -hmm. um, I, Coach Merck protest. He was upset. He wanted to fight the guy. And I told Coach Murray, no, man, it's part of the game. I said, even, and then, oh, then I got in the dressing room after the fight was over. Mm -hmm. I had announced my retirement to Roy. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, if you retire, I'll retire. Mm -hmm. 
So he put it back on me. No. <laughs> so that prompted me to move down to the featherweight division. But Corrales, may he rest in peace, he was a very, very strong puncher. You would look at him and you think because he's long and tall, he would fight outside. But for whatever reason, he was able to get great leverage on his punches at close range. Mm -hmm. The punch he dropped me with, I never saw the punch coming. So he was able to put me down. What what a great what a great warrior. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Diego. Yes. And then um, you fought Lil Hagler, Freddie Norwood mm -hmm. for the title. How'd you feel going mm -hmm. into the ring for your first like, uh, your WBA that, championship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt, I felt, <clears throat> I felt good. I felt really good. Um, I really did. I felt good. I was in shape. Um, I I knew that he was strong. Vince Phillips, who's from Pensacola, he sparred. He said he's in the gym with him, he's fought with him, and he's really strong. So he advised me to do a lot of pull-ups to make sure I'm strong for the fight. Mm -hmm. I believe, I believe <clears throat> that that fight could have been more entertaining than what it was. Um, as far as action pack, not the dirt in this other fight, but action pack. Mm -hmm. But I think once he, I put him down, I dropped him, he realized that he had to make the fight dirty. He wanted to get, get disqualified. He knew that he wasn't getting anything but his biggest one. His, that part that was his biggest purse. Mm -hmm. He was getting his biggest purse for for fighting me that night. Um, so, but everything else, he wanted to just make it into an ugly fight, mm -hmm. and which it was. And I hated that took place like that, but it happened. But I felt great going in the fight. I wasn't nervous. He, I knew that again. I belonged. He couldn't beat me. If I if I stuck to the game plan, I would beat him, and and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And how did it feel afterwards when you won that title? Did, was Michael yeah. Buffer the announcer? Did he announce you yeah. the new champ? How yeah, that feel, man? yeah. <laughs> how that feel? Man, you you talking about? Um, I watched that tape just to hear Michael Buffer say that. <laughs> I am so serious. I don't know how you know, but that is that is one of the greatest feeling from a fighter is to hear Buffer say that. Yeah. It felt it felt great to me. I couldn't sleep. Uh, Norwood, after the fight was over, Norwood was he's really nice after the fight. Mm -hmm. He came in my dressing room. Well, you know, of course you know when you when you fight the guy, you, they take you you they, well actually I went in his dressing room. You you put his title on but you give it back when you get in the dressing room. Yeah. So I got in the back, and they was like, Coach Merck said, let me take him his title. I said, no, I'm going to take it to him. He was like, no, nah, man, he crazy, man. No, I said, trust me. The camera's not in here, it's man to man. He know, and I know, he was not going to beat me. So I went in his dressing room, I took his belt off, I handed it to him. I hit your belt, man. And I said to him, I said, before you even get started, I don't have a problem with ever fighting you. I will fight you again without a problem, bro. I don't have no problem with that, with fighting you. Hmm. And then he said, nah, I'm getting a man, keep the belt. I said, I'm not gonna keep your belt, man. He said, nah, man, keep it, man. And he went in his bag. He said, I got another one right here. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I laughed, I said, okay, I keep the belt. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm serious. So, you know, you know, most guys have to wait on their belt to come. I had his belt, and, you know, I had a lot of, I had some people that came in town from uh, Tokyo to want to take pictures and all over, man, mm -hmm. wanted to do an interview with me. I was able to use his belt, you know, for pictures and interviews until my belt came. And I gave it to Merck, and Merck mailed it to uh, Kenny Adams, and Adams gave it to him. But he was, you know, he was a nice guy after the fight was over. But he knew he was defeated. Mm -hmm. And, and, well, there was nothing he could do to win that fight, but fight dirty. Yeah. And what about your fight with Victor Polo? Whew, Victor Polo, uh, Victor Polo was, was a good fight. 
Um, I, I could have did more in the fight with Polo. Um, um, Polo was long, he had long reach. He didn't hit, even though he, he was 29 wins, 22 knockouts, he had no power. Hmm. He never hurt me. One round, he threw 100, 100 and some odd punches. But I came back the next round and I dominated him. Um, I won the fight. You know, um, I I could have done more in that fight, but you know, I won. Uh, he he was he was strong. You know, that to be honest, that felt like me fighting for the title because of the way the fight ended against Norwood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then. You went to Puerto Rico. Were you a single guy when you went to Puerto Rico to fight Daniel Seda? Because <laughs> um, you want to be single no. when you're there. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was not. Yeah, no. I was almost. I was, I was actually. Another thing about the, the polo fight, I was actually going through a divorce, so yeah. that was a trying time just getting through that fight. Yeah, I don't even know so, you were married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. But when I go to, when I got to Puerto Rico, I was I was my divorce was almost final. That still sucks. I just got divorced in November, man. <laughs> it's rough. It's, 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 yeah, it's hard. It's tough, man. Hard, man. I couldn't even yeah, work. Yeah. I couldn't work, man. I couldn't do anything. Yeah, it was just, it was a tough thing for me too, man. I can feel your feel your pain. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Terrible, man. Yeah. But the but the Santa fight was a, was a good fight. You know, mm-hmm. uh, he was a small guy. I I felt like the the WVA they moved him up too quick. You know, Seda was eighteen and 0, 16 knockouts. Um, I think eighteen and 0, 16 knockouts. But the the fact of the matter is he had no experience really. He beat, he did beat um, a former champion and uh he beat Oscar Leon too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um uh, you know, I didn't think he was ready to fight me. And, and when we actually, the fight was called because of the headbutt, mm-hmm. the WBA made him my mandatory, so I had to do a rematch. He retired. He retired. Said he didn't want to fight me. Mm-hmm. He said he needed to rethink his boxing game. He retired. They dropped him from being ready number one. Once they dropped him from being ready number one, he came back and fought against um, Casimir York. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the fact that he just wanted to retire. He just didn't want to fight me. Mm-hmm. Who, who did he come back and fight? I didn't hear you. Casimir York. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they fought, you know, he, he lost to Casimir York, but he dropped Casimir York. Casimir York dropped him. Mm-hmm. You know, he lost the decision against, against Casimir York. Yeah. And then, uh, you fought Oscar Leon. What happened with him in that fight? Oscar Leon, man, was was mentally a very, 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 very tough fight. Um, one of my trainers, Mario, who I, I love dearly, man, you know, Mario, for whatever reason, he and Roy got confused with my fight time. And this is the story I'm getting. They got confused with my fight time. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mario showed up at my dressing room with all of my boxing gear. Mm-hmm. 15 minutes was for the time for me to get in the ring. Mm-hmm. So, we had to borrow wraps from somebody, which they ended up cutting off my hand. And when once Mario came in, they rewrapped my hand. HBO was under panic because they didn't think I was going to be ready to fight. So I ended up going in the ring with with this guy. Bone dry, not even loose, didn't get a sweat, didn't get a chance to hit the mitts before I got in the fight. And I pulled a victory out, man. Hmm. Uh, Roy showed up in, at that fight in the eighth round. He didn't get there to the eighth round. Hmm. Hmm. So... You know, I'm like saying, yo, what's up with that? But he didn't get that to the eighth round. He said he got a lot confused with the time. And, and Mario, like I said, Mario got there 15 minutes before the play. Hmm. Um, but he, uh, Oscar Leon himself, he was he was a gutsy guy. You know, um, 
once I got going, I think I started picking up around the fourth round. Um, I dropped him twice. I clearly won the fight. Um, but, you know, he was, he was a tough thing. It seemed like stuff was happening. It's it, it, so much happened. Muhammad Ali said it. It's so much happened before you even get to the ring, before you dance under those lights, that can determine whether you win or lose the fight. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? With me not being able to get get can't even get warmed up. And then this guy comes in, Oscar Leon, he jumps on me right away. He jumped on top of me from round from round one. So, you know, I'm sitting there fighting this guy close, fighting close, digging, trying to get him out of there. Um, but I ended up putting the victory out. Mm-hmm. Was it was it called a draw? Or was it No, it was called it was called a split decision. Split decision, that's it. Split decision, yeah. yeah. yeah I ain't up I ended up retaining my title. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, uh, what's it like fighting Juan Manuel Marquez? You fought him next, right? Or the next yeah, fight. Yeah. 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 Like Mar- 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 Marquez, I did nothing and he did nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I just got criticized more for doing nothing than, than he did. But he didn't commit. If I threw five punches, he threw eight. You know, uh, neither one of us did anything. Um, at that moment against uh, Marquez, I knew in my heart that it was time for me to make a change in my training and my team around me. It was just that time. Um, I, I felt stale in the ring. I was just going through emotions. And... That was the worst fight of my life against Marquez. And I wish that I could get an opportunity to go back and fight him. I wish I could fight him again. Hmm. Uh, Like I got an opportunity to fight Kevin. The thing about it is he continued to win and I continued to get fat. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I I continued to do nothing. I didn't... you know, I wasn't active. I haven't been active. Mm. You know, um, so he continued to move along, move along, move along, move up, move up, move up. But he's the same fighter, man. He's the same guy mm. that 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 I fought. It's no difference in him. But there's a difference in me. I didn't display the better Derek Gainer that night. Mm. You know, but he displayed the same more kids. But I know that I probably will never get the opportunity to change that. Hmm. Yeah. And how did you how did you get treated when you went to Indonesia to fight Chris John? How did they treat you there? I know what Michael Jackson felt like. Hmm. <laughs> I felt like a star. Wow. When I got off the plane, <laughs> when I got outside, there was thousands and thousands of people out there. Hmm. I'm serious. I I felt like it was so many people. That when I stepped out there, I had to run. I ran back inside. I backed up, and I was like, I told um, Alfred Smith, I said, "You're not gonna believe how many people out there." And he was like, "What you talking about?" Because we didn't. I didn't know, man. I mean, it was thousands, thousands of people out there. It's a I scene. Mean, cool. Yes. Well. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That was for them. That was the biggest fight in Indonesia at that time that they ever had with me coming over there. Hmm. They they said that when Muhammad Ali came, he went somewhere. I don't know if it was the Philippines or when he fought uh, Smoke Joe Frazier. I don't know if it was that. But that fight that night was the biggest fight that Indonesia has ever had. Hmm. And, yeah. And, I mean... Everywhere I went, there were paparazzi or people taking pictures of me. I had my fiance with me. Everywhere we went, they were taking pictures. Was anything it bad? Was, Did you get any death threats? No, no, I no. It was it was actually it was actually nice. It was nice. The people there were very nice, man. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Um, the the only mistake that I made going over there is that I listened to. Someone that said if I ate the food, it would make me sick. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. 
you listen so, to? Who? I listened to someone who told me that the food was gonna make me sick. Mm -hmm. So what I did, me and my fiance, who's now my wife, we loaded up all his beef stew and cans and collard greens and cans, and we flew all that stuff over there. Mm -hmm. So I ate out of a can for for ten days. Mm -hmm. And and fight night, they told me that the water they they they, they got me. They told me that the water will make me throw up in the corner. So fight night, while I'm fighting this guy, I didn't drink any water. Mm -hmm. I fought him twelve rounds without drinking any water. So I didn't, you know, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't even have water on my head. I didn't cool down or anything, man. Hmm. Um, which was not smart. And Chris John is a good fighter. Yeah, yeah he's mean. a good fighter. He's 50 something old. He's a good fighter. Yeah, a lot of people think he don't leave Indonesia because he must not be good. A lot of people think. But he no, he can. Now, now, I, I agree. Fight, he won't fight me in the States. But he would fight Rocky Warriors in the States. Hmm. But you couldn't, he would not come over here and fight me in the States. Hmm. And then another thing is when you travel over to Indonesia, you need two weeks, man. I never adjusted. You know, over there is nighttime. So fight night, I'm driving to the arena. I'm snoring in the car. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's morning time for me over there. You know, if it's, it's 10 at night, you know, it's morning time. I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. I never adjusted, man. My body never got prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Never. But, you know, it is, it is what it is. But he's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. Mm -hmm. How long did you stay in Indonesia after the fight was over? Uh, I left the next morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. I left the next morning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, overall, it's, you know, it's, it's really different being in a place like that. You have really rich people and you got poor people. Mm -hmm. There's no middle class. Yeah. You know, you can see a whole family riding a moped next to a Rolls Royce. Yeah. That's how they want it to yeah. be here, too. That's how they want it to be. I, That's how they're trying to make it and get to be in America, you know? Super yeah. rich and super poor. Yes. Yes. Most definitely. It's sad there, but hey, we're going to join them. Right. How, how did, uh, no, how, how was that fight with Carlos Navarro? Carlos Navarro was, was a close fight, man. That, he could have won that fight. Mm -hmm. You know, it could have won either way. You know, I thought I won. He felt he won. Um, if he had got a decision, I wouldn't have been mad. Um, Carlos Navarro um, is very, he had a lot of experience. He was, he was strong. Never hurt me, but he was strong. Um, um, he, he fought, he fought me smart. You know, he, he wanted to stay away from my left hand. Um, but, you know, I, I thought I did enough to win the fight, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but you know, we, we fought in my area. I'm, I'm, I'm from the Gulf Coast. We fought in the Gulf Coast. Close rounds go, go to me. You know, um, close rounds, if I fought him in Cali or Vegas, would have went to him. Mm -hmm. um, but to say that, like I said, if he had got the decision, I, I wouldn't have been mad. I would shake his hand, and I wouldn't protest. You mm -hmm. know, but it was it was just that close. Mm -hmm. it was just that close. You know. How about that you time? Know, did you did you feel like a difference in yourself, or did you feel like you were maybe getting burnt out at all? I, I felt like I felt like the way I felt when I fought more kids. Mm -hmm. The same, the same feeling is that. I need it, I need to move on. You know, you date, it's like dating somebody. When you know the relationship is bad for you, but you stay. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was that type of situation. You know, I, I, it was it was really time for for me to go. And, and the side note, man, um, I've never said this to any anybody before, but I suffer from um, really, 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 I get fatigued a lot. Fatigue? From, very fatigued from, mm -hmm. I have severe allergy problems. Mm -hmm. Where, if you suffer from allergies, you can understand. Mm -hmm. It makes you very, very fatigued, makes you tired. Almost like having asthma. Mm -hmm. um, and when I have pretty much like a flare-up, 
it hurts and make me really, really tired and fatigued. Um, so, um, on top of that, you know, I was, I'm not, I've never felt burned out because like I said, I live where I don't party, I don't drink, I don't smoke. It, it was really time for me to make a change and go into a different environment. Hmm. I almost walked out of that fight with Navarro the morning of the fight. Hmm. I didn't want to take the fight hmm. because I didn't like, um, I can't, I don't really want to say, but I didn't like the contract situation. I didn't like what took place and it has been going on for a few years and it's just time for me to make that move and I made that move. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all gotta make a move sometimes, man. Yes. Definitely gotta do that. And, um, let's see. Then you had your last fight against Angel Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like that might be your last fight for a while, or your last fight? No, I, I felt like I felt like I did them last. The the, the the feeling is, you know, you, I want to fight, and I want to keep going. So um, I stay here in this small city where you pretty much have this one gym, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm training out of this one gym, and um, working, 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 and. Um, the fight came available, the fight, Carlos Hernandez took the fight. I get in the ring, um, Carlos threw all these punches at me. Um, I took a knee, he dropped me, he, he dropped me. I took a knee, got up, beat the guy for the rest of the fight. Um, and I knew that in order for me to continue to go, I needed to be active. You look back these last few years, I had one fight here, one fight there, one fight here, one fight there, and it wasn't, it's not working. It's not working. Mm -hmm. So I either, the, the trip I'm making on Monday is either I'm going to train and fight and fight and fight, or I'm going to retire. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. Because I can't fight Carlos Hernandez and barely win based on the judges' uh, split decision. Because that, that m makes me appear not to belong. If I'm barely beating Carlos Hernandez or barely beating Carlos Navarro, I'm supposed to beat those guys easily. Mm -hmm. But if, if I'm still in my, in my gym work, I'm not learning anything new, then those guys are going to have a chance at beating me. So that's why I'm not trying to train either Mayweather camp in Las Vegas so that I can learn new stuff mm -hmm. and get my mind back going and get back active. Who are you training with out there? I'll be training with Jeff. Oh, that's good. Jeff's a good guy. Nice mm -hmm. guy. And uh, what do you feel like boxing did for you like, in your life? Boxing saved my life. I mean, if it wasn't for boxing, I know I'd probably be, you know, there in jail. Hmm. So it, it 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 saved it saved me. Boxing boxing has allowed me to provide for my family. It has allowed me to open a UPS store. Um, I opened a charter school. I, I still own my building. Um, it, it has allowed me to open a restaurant. Uh, and do other things, you know, the one thing I will say that how I feel about me, I can only speak for me, is that boxing is what I did. It's not who I am. You know, I'm so much more than just a fighter. Now, I know everything that I've accomplished, it started because I went down to Roy Jones Sr.'s gym. Hmm. I realized that. But I will use boxing to open other doors for me so that when I am done with boxing I have so many other things that I do that I won't miss boxing as much I miss boxing right now today as I talk to you I miss boxing I'm hungry yeah. I, I work out every single day and and 
you know, the gym that I use here in town, by the way, I'm going to open up a gym. Um, these young guys are at me. They're actually trying to make an example out of me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I got young guys coming at me, trying to get me. So, <laughs> boxing has done everything and more for me. And, and, I, and I thank God for boxing. Yeah. And what's the best advice you ever got in boxing? And who gave it to you? Um, God, what's his name? What's his name? Um, God, I can't think of his name. We, he, from back in uh, Muhammad Ali days, he's supposed to fight Muhammad Ali, but they say Muhammad Ali wouldn't fight him. He is from Portland, Oregon. I cannot think mm. of his name. Dad Spencer. Mm -hmm. Dad Spencer told me that if I would dedicate three years to my life, to boxing, three years to boxing, I would have any and everything I want. Hmm. Those simple little words made all the difference to me. All I needed to do was dedicate myself, and I did that. And I was able to accomplish a lot. Um, I fought a lot of people, man, and I won, um, I won 10 different titles. Not all of them were war titles, but USBA, NABF, you know, a lot of different titles. Mm -hmm. But I, I have achieved a lot, and I have achieved a lot outside of boxing that's not even associated with boxing. But uh, I'm hungry to become world champion again, mm -hmm. and that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, who's the best you ever fought to this point? The you best I've ever everybody. fought to this point. Man, who did you um, know? Um skill wise, uh Kevin Kelly. Mm -hmm. Kevin Kelly. Yeah. So and uh so what have you been doing since twenty ten when you had your last fight? What you been doing? Just staying busy um, opening restaurants and stuff? I I, I have a um, um chicken wing restaurant. It's a sports bar. I um, I have I beat uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, Famous Days, all of we had a cook off here in town, and I guess Hooters, Daxby's, all of the top wing chain, and they had three awards. And my little restaurant that I you know it's a three thousand square feet restaurant. I mean I have beer and wine, the whole night. It's a sports bar, TVs everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I beat them in the cook-off. <laughs> and they, and they're, they're chain. I won the best hot wing and the best overall wing. Now, how does winning that compare to winning that championship? It, it, it honestly, yeah. honestly, that, that night it felt great. It felt really, really great. Yeah. Because of the simple fact that um, it, it's me, you know, my, my concept that I came up with, you know, it's a great concept. The, the wings, the, you know, the flavors is something that I came up with. I love to cook, you know, so it, it felt really good doing something outside of the box. Mm -hmm. It felt mm -hmm. really good. I had a food truck, me and my wife did, and it felt so good when we were getting, like, you know, attention for it and stuff. You know, it yeah. Good, no? And uh, yeah. who's your picks with Manny versus Tim Bradley? Who are you picking? I'm gonna pick Manny. And what about Floyd and Miguel? I'm gonna pick Floyd. I, I pick Floyd against against anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, right now, um, I was a little worried about Floyd um, a couple of years ago because Floyd wasn't active. Yeah. And and I know because I'm a boxer and our style is pretty close. You know, he he uses his shoulder for defense. Uh, but we, we're both counter punchers. Uh, but I know from experience, um, we need to be active as, as boxers, counter punchers. Mike Tyson, he's a power guy. He can fight one time a year because all he wants to do is land one shot. Mm -hmm. But when you fight you know, a guy like Floyd, who is a, a slickster, he needs to be in the ring to be slick. And gym work can get you sharp, but it's not a, it's not the same as being in a fight, being in a fight. So 
So I was a little worried about him a couple of years ago, but now he seems to be getting more active. So I'm not worried about him anymore. Mm-hmm. I like to see him do well. I, I, I really do. We were, we were big rivals at one point. You know, we were scheduled to fight one. Mm-hmm. And that fight was the one, that was the reason him and his dad kind of fell out with the negotiation when he, he called the fight that was offered to him with me, he called it slave money. Mm-hmm. That was that was the fight that me and, me and him were supposed to have. He had agreed to fight me, and then the fight fell apart, you know, after that. So, mm-hmm. that, that's, you know, the only deal was I, the contract was coming, well, I was going to sign it, and he was supposed to sign it, but we both had agreed to the money, the bout taking place in Vegas, the MGM, the whole nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ended up pulling out. So, mm-hmm. there you go. How do you think a fight between you guys would have played out back then? Um, I, I, I think I would have won the fight. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason the reason that is, um, I don't think Floyd... I know I would have been the fastest guy he faced. Um, and with me being left-handed, I think that would have made a big difference in the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, because him, my, my punches come from a different angle. Um, you know, I, I think... Um, sometimes guys they shoot different shots trying to get Floyd and different and pretty much trying to knock Floyd out down the middle I, my shots would have been a little bit different <clears throat> yeah. um, um, but the, the difference now <clears throat> is, is that um, he he is he's more active mm-hmm. he, he's fighting at every weight than, than what I'm going to fight at and um, it'd be crazy for him to even consider fighting me, or me crazy for me to consider fighting him at this point. Yeah. And uh, what do you think of Bernard and Chad coming up, second fight? Hmm. I like Chad in that fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Chad. I like I like Chad in that fight. I I think that uh, I like Bernard a lot. I think he's a crafty guy. I like I would like you know. Bernard is an older fighter, um, so I would love to see him win, but I just don't see him beating Chad Dawson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, and I think I think he was Chad was going to win that first fight. Mm-hmm. Now, if Chad, I don't if Chad doesn't uh, if he doesn't get caught up in trying to kill Bernard with all his punches. I think mm-hmm. the fight would be a whole lot easier. But if he's trying to blow him out and not take his time, Bernard would last a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. All right, that's it. Let's just talk quick about what's what's coming up next for you. Like, you realize you're like halfway almost to the. You'll be like eligible for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you well, have to start I, over again. Yeah, I know, man. I know, man. I, I, I'm just not ready to to, you know to give it up. I think if, if I retire at this stage, I think I would regret it. Mm-hmm. And and I don't want to do that. I want to get my body in shape like I'm doing every day and go to Vegas, get outside of my comfort zone because it's, it's most definitely cool for me to stay in my city and just train. I know everybody. Everybody knows me. Uh, but I'm going to go in Vegas and be in the gym where I have no friends. I don't know anyone in that in that gym. But I'm willing to go and put in the work and train and spar with guys who I don't know, and 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 make a way and start over and get back to the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what I really want to do. So this is the the the, the beginning for me. Like I said, I leave. I leave out of here uh, on Monday morning, going to Vegas. Hmm. I'm glad I got you. You'll be super busy soon. When's your? Yep. You got a fight scheduled or not yet? I don't have anything scheduled. I, I'm going out there, you know, with my hands out. Put me on the card. Hmm. You know, I'm gonna get in shape. And if there's some cards out there that I can get on, I'll be willing to do it. I'm a free agent. I'm not signed with anybody. Uh, I'll probably get a deal. I may get some offers. I'll have a couple meetings while I get out there. Um, and, and I'll see what happens. Yeah, well, good luck, man. Hope to see 
a lot coming from you. It's yeah, man, I hope so, man. In the ring by fall, you think? I, I, you know, if if I don't have, if I don't get anything mm -hmm. out there once I go to Vegas, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna do a show here in September. Yeah, nice. I, I will do. A, I will promote my own show here uh, in my city in September, yeah. for sure. Yeah, so be. yes, by by the fall, I will be had a fight. Nice man, nice. Congratulations, man. I'm happy for you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank